Hello. We are at our 44th lesson of the Bible. And we're coming to the end of this study. And at the close of this study, the final segments are about the King James Bible. Today we're looking at King James the Sixth. King James, King James, King James. Well, who on earth is King James? Noah's the six. He's also the, the, the letter I. One. Six is the number of man. So, in 1558, Queen Elizabeth I came to the throne. Oh, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong page. We're at number 45. I was on the wrong page. Excuse me. We're on the wrong. So, good afternoon. We're at number 45. We're coming to the end. We're looking at James. It'd help if I be on the right page, I guess. He's the son of the Mary Queen of Scots. He's James VI of Scotland. As an infant in 1567, he was raised by a Scottish to be the Protest Protestant king. He was raised with a tutor of several languages. This is no dummy. He studied the Bible. He translated the book of Psalms, Deuteronomy 17, 18, and it shall be when he sitteth on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests of the Levites. Now that was written to the law to the, to the Hebrews about their kings. And you know what? When you read the history of the kings, first and second kings, in first and second Samuel. Not once do you ever read that the Holy Spirit record that any king actually did what the law told him. Now they may have, but it's not recorded. He paraphrased the book of Revelation. Four different regrets of government during his minority. Yeah, minority which ended officially in 1578 when he gained he did not gain full control of his government until 1583 so there, there are four different parts of his government and they're clashing you know like we have different parts of our government you know we have got the Democrats, Republicans, we got the House and the Senate and all that and they clash but he got full control of 1617. Now the religions of England, the religions of the country, were the Puritans. They're the clean heart. They're the ones that came over on the Mayflower. The, the Episcopalian, yeah, Episcopalian, I can't say it. Now James, King James, referred the divine right of kings. King James said, you know what? The Bible says, God says, King. You know what God, you know what King James would say to your president? <clears throat> and it's true. The divine right of the Bible has been kings. We got the king of kings, the Lord of lords coming. We talk about America being a Christian nation, not by our government. On the grounds of Proverbs 16.10, a divine sentence is in the lips of a king. His mouth transgresses not in judgment. So King James studied the Bible. King James translated Psalms. He paraphrased the book of Revelation. He has multiple languages. He claims his authority by God. Now Episcopalian hated the Geneva Bible, which is the Bible of the time. 
Many people hated hated the Geneva Bible because the footnotes, which I read and study, the footnotes were Republican in nature and not monarchy. And a lot of them footnotes of the Geneva Bible, they go against religion. They would be for the Christian. Now the Bibles of the time, the Puritans had the Geneva Bible. The Episcopalians had the Bishop's Bible. We, we talked all about this. King James says, I want my party Bible. Which would be the future KJV. In 1929, it was called the King James. In 1929, it was called the King James. Then there would be on the market other versions. You see, the King James Version didn't come until we had the Revised Standard Version, the American Standard Version, the King James Version. At the publishing house zeal for, for versions, when the versions came out, in 1929, in the same year, the stock market crashed. What did the RSV, what did the ASV, what did they bring? They brought the stock market to crash. You know what the RSV did to England? Close the door. You know what the ASV is doing to America? Closing the door. Now, King James did not translate the Bible. Get that. He did translating, but he did not translate what we call the King James. And a lot of people say, which is true, you know, we say the KJV. There's really no version of the King James. It's the King James Bible. Versions are the other modern crap. Now, a millennial petition was a list of requests given to James VI by the Puritans in 1603. A thousand Puritan pastors signed this. It would allow changes in the church and government church-state system. The Church of England was a church-state. They wanted to eliminate the sign of the cross. Three in a row, tack, tack, row. That's nowhere in the Bible. Matter of fact, when you tic-tac-toe, you three in a row. The Bible says, curse is he that hangeth on a tree. The cross is a curse, not a blessing. It would eliminate priestly garments. You know, you know the, the fruit of the loom tag in the front? I was in the elevator one time in the hospital. A couple of them got in, and you know this black, you know black suit guy with his tag in the front cover, and they're in there. Oh, Father, how you doing, Father? I said, How you doing, Mister? And one of them, you're supposed to call him. He ain't my father. I said he's a reckless man. I said the Bible says call no man your father. I ain't calling him father. They would eliminate wedding rings. Now, the Puritans were strict. You know that circle of the wedding ring? And if you were to look at the truth, listen, the Puritans didn't do Christmas and didn't do Easter. They didn't have a flag to wave and all that. Amen, glory to God. Some things the Jehovah Witnesses have right. Some things. Not all. In Massachusetts, it was illegal to have Easter. It was illegal to have Christmas. And people were arrested. They were the Puritans. Stricter enforced church discipline. <laughs> That's out the window today. All are welcome. A ministry men trained in the Bible, which would be the Geneva Bible at the time. The Puritans wanted to reform. 
Like Martin Luther wanted to read, there's something wrong with the Church of England. There's something wrong with, with the Catholic Church. Corrections of quotations and corruption of quotations in the English Book of Prayer. Now, we don't have a Book of Prayer. Now, i got a Book of Prayer right here. But it ain't, you know, say this prayer. It's people's names and events. I call it my book of prayer. I got one in the bedroom right by my bed. It's just a list of names and activities and things to pray for. They, you know, it's actual prayers. You read them. You know, our Father, our Heaven, hallowed be. That's not what we're to do. Now, the Hampton Court Conference on January 1604 convened at the Hampton Court Palace for a discussion between King James I of England and the representatives of the Church of England, including the English Puritans. So again, this big group of people together. God is doing a work. Four Pur Puritans chosen by the king, King James. He didn't choose Catholics. Nine bishops, nine preachers, and four professors from Cambridge and Oxford. You know, you know, Cambridge Bible, Oxford Bible. Before they put that RSV, ASV, Craft, NIV, King James. The Puritans had really no favor. They were against all odds. They were outnumbered. But so was Israel many times. Dr. John Reynolds was the main speaker on behalf of the Puritans. The petition requests to translate of the whole Bible to the original Hebrew and Greek as possible it could be Hebrew and Greek text. We want the complete, all of the Bible translated. Out of the original tongues. Where you would find the foreword and the introduction in the King James Bible by the translators. Yeah, I know the IVs and all those old carpy crap doo doo Bibles have the same thing, but. How come their Bibles are missing words, altered words, adding, subtracting, omitting? Printed without marginal notes. That was the problem with the Geneva Bible. The marginal notes, they cause controversy. We want a plain and simple Bible, complete, whole, of the original uh, writings without man. And what he has to say. Now, I don't have a Schofield Bible right now. I've had Schofield Bibles. And because of budget, I had to get another Bible with Martin and all that. Schofield's got some wonderful notes. Other Bibles have got some wonderful notes. And then they got some notes that are purely satanic. They're purely off the wall. They are wrong. Webster's 1828 Dictionary is a great dictionary. But on some things, Webster takes the side of the Catholic Church. There's only one pure word in, in the world, and that's God's Word. Well, men wrote the Bible by the inspiration of God. Shakespeare wrote, but God didn't tell him what to write. Used in all churches of England in divine service. So in other words, the Puritans would say, you don't have a church of NIV, ASV, PDQ, CARP. The churches would have one Bible. Amen, glory to God. But in 1929, when the stock market crashed because of all these versions, Oh, what's the modern Bible done? 
modern Bible put America on the street, on, on the streets with no jobs. There's another stark market crash coming. If England and the entire country, there was only one or the same Bible. Amen. To settle on one book before we settle on any doctor. Even when we talk about the virgin birth, even though we we talk about the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, though we talk about the gospel, though we talk about the, the humanity of Christ and, and the Godship of Christ, we better settle on one Bible, one word of God. Amen. You got modern versions, they well, she's not a virgin, she's a maiden. You're wrong. You got the modern version, they take Jesus out of the word. You're wrong. So, the roadway is a clear path to what we would have would be the King James Bible. I didn't say version either. Now, the Bibles at the time, we had the Great Bible. We talked about these. That was too big. That was a big Bible. We had the, the Geneva Bible. It was too debatable. The notes. People did not like the notes. Somebody look at the... Well, I just started with this Bible. But if you look at my my Schofield Bibles I got in my closet, I'm saving for my children to have after I go. Some of those notes, yeah. I mean, I, I believe in the gap theory. Many don't. I believe that uh, the, the, the angels came down and made it with women in Genesis before you know the flood. Uh, not many people believe that. And then you have the Bishop's Bible, which is too careless and has mistakes. So there's the Bible the Puritans say, you know, we gotta get we gotta get right. Hey, listen, the careless and the mistakes are the RSV, the ASV, and we, we gotta get back to one word. We gotta get back to the right word. We gotta get back to the King James. That ain't gonna happen. That's gonna happen only when Jesus Christ comes back. Are you saying Jesus Christ is going to come back with the King James Bible? I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that as much as I'm sitting here in this chair reading to you out of my notes. But the Puritans were defeated. The right never wins. The truth is not popular. June 22nd, 1604. 54 men selected by the king to translate the new Bible. 54. 5 plus 4 is 9. That's the number of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If you got King James IV 6 and you got King James I, you put them together, you got 7. That's complete. By the way, you know what James is? If you were to go into the Hebrew, James would be Jacob. God waited to a name of royalty would be Jacob to give us our Bible. Uh, RSV, uh, where do you find that name in the scriptures? American Standard Version, where do you find that in the scriptures? You don't. The main qualification. For these men, and we'll talk about it later date, they had to take pain in their private study of the scriptures. Now today you'll get a bunch of scholars together and they'll come up with a version. Well, how do I feel? What do I feel? Well, you know, this verse offends the sodomites. we got to change it. Well, this verse right here, you know, we got to get rid of male and female because some people don't believe they're a male or a female. So we got to get rid of it. Got, what do the people think? What do the scholarly people think? They're saying, no. What does God say? God said it. That settles it. 
That's not true with your Bibles today. God called it. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. I wonder if any king or president today would search the standard of today's church and study to find the errors that's in today's Laodicean church. No, because the church are going on. You tell them, hey, that's paganism. Oh, we're going to do it. Hey, that's not the right Bible. Well, that's your belief. Forty-five videos, forty-five segments, and there are going to be people listening and watching, and they're going to stay with their perverted Bible. It's easier to read. No, it talks about your sin. You enjoy your sin, so you're going to do what man says and not what God says. Not scholarship, not degree, not name, not title, but what did they study? They were men that knew and know the Bible. Now there was a gunpowder plot. It was failed. It was an attempt to blow up England, England's King James, 1566-1625, King James one. And the Parliament on November 5 or 5th, 1605. The plot was organized by Robert Caspi in an effort to end the persecution of Roman Catholics by the English government. Now when we get into that, we get all Jesuits. Now the Jesuits are called the Society of Jesus. Paul said there's another Jesus. A Roman Catholic order of priests and brothers found half a millennium ago on a soldier turned mystic. I mean, Ooh. Ignis Loyola. You know Loyola. Loyola. That's a college. That's a Catholic college. Brought to us these devils. These killers in the name of the Catholic Church. But most people call them Jesuits. I call them killers. I call them murderers. I call them enemy. The gunpowder treason plot or the Jesuit treason. Now you won't learn the Jesuit treason. You probably won't even learn about the gunpowder plot in the public school. Or they tried to blow up the parliament. They tried to kill the king. But they won't tell you about the Bible. They won't tell you about the religion. It was a group of providential English Catholics. How have we been talking about the Catholics in the Bible? What have we been talking about then? What have we been talking about for 45 segments? Anything to do with the Bible, the Catholics will kill banish, destroy, and prevent by Robert Caspi, Guy Fawkes. The plan was to blow up the House of Lords during the state opening of Parliament on the 5th of November 1605. Now the first meeting between the five conspirators took place on 20 May 1604. Alone in a private room, the five plotters swore an oath on secrecy on a prayer book, not a Bible, on a prayer book. And if it's Catholic, it would have been the missal. How can the Catholic prayer book called a missal? And Catholic priests live in a rectum, I mean rectory. Father John Garrick, a friend of Caspi's, was celebrating Mass in another room, and five men subsequently received the Eucharist. At this meeting, 
of the gunpowder plot, they are receiving the maps while they're planning to blow up Parliament and kill the king. Like they did on the filming of the movie, The Passion. And I can't think of that actor's name now, and who cares? Where every day that movie, The Passion, was more about Mary than Jesus. They would celebrate the Mass of eating and drinking the literal body and blood of Jesus that is forbidden before the law, during the law, the church age, the millennium, and the tribulation period. I had that out of order. So they're taking part in the devil's worship while they're going to plot the gunpowder plot. During the search of the House of Lords in the evening of 4 November 1605, Guy Fawkes was discovered guarding 36 barrels. Barrels. Of gunpowder. Enough to reduce the House of Lords to rubble. And he was arrested. You know what God said? <laughs> hey, you better go over there. There's a plot going on. Now, if God was for the Catholic Church, he would let it go. If you read Fox's Book of Mormons, that Catholic Church is nothing but murderers. Don't pray for them. I pray for Catholics. I don't pray for the church. According to Fonks, or Fox, however you say it, 20 barrels of gunpowder were brought in at first, followed by 16 more in 20 July. The supply of gunpowder was supposedly controlled by the government, but it was easily obtained from unlawful uh, sources. So we're going to murder the government while we're using stolen government gunpowder. And the Catholic Jesuits are behind this. Because we want to kill King James 1 because we don't want the Bible in the hands and the eyes of the people. And Baptist churches today do not want the King James Bible in the pulpit, in the eyes, in the ears, in the hands of Christians. They'll give them the other crappy Bibles that closed down England, that closed down America, and that gave us the Great Depression. He again found folks dressed in a cloak and hat, wearing boots and a spur. He was arrested, whereupon he gave his name as John Johnson. You know, that's what the popes do. Pope John. Pope Pius. That's not their names. Alexander Pukibaka. He was carrying a lantern now held in Ashamlone Museum. Oxford and search of his person revealed a pocket watch, several slow matches, and torch wood. 36 barrels of gunpowder were discovered hidden under the piles of faggots, that's wood laid out, and coal. You know, when they're going to put somebody to death by burning them on the stakes, the stakes are called faggots. You know why they call queer people faggots? Because there was a time that sodomy was against the law, and if you were caught of sodomy, it was a public execution. You were burned on the faggots. Do you know that? You know why in prison they wear their pants below their butt? Because they want faggot or queer sexual relations of men and men. And you think it's a cool fashion. 
You're talking to a preacher and teacher that was eight years in prison ministry. I know what I'm talking about. Guy Fawkes Night, or known as Guy Fawkes Day, Bonfire Night and Fireworks Night, is an annual commemoration observed on the 5th of November. Primary United Kingdom. Its history begins with the events of 5 November 1605. When Guy Fawkes, a member of the gunpowder plot, was arrested while guarding explosives that plotters had placed beneath the House of Lords. So that gunpowder was placed and ready that Guy Fawkes would have had the matches to set the place on fire, explode. Get rid of King James. And your Baptist churches today would be happy because we wouldn't have a King James Bible and Stiley would be shutting up. Thank you, Lord, for showing him the gunpowder. Thank you, Lord, for arresting the man. Oh, the Baptist church celebrates Easter. The Baptist church celebrates Christmas. Why doesn't the Baptist church celebrate Guy Funk's night? It's a night that God said, no, you ain't going to blow the King James Bible up. Celebrating the fact that King James 1 had survived the attempt on his life. People lit bonfires all around London months later. And the injunction of the observance of the 5th of November Act Enforce an annual public day of thanksgiving for the plot's failure. Had it succeeded, it would have been a prevention of the Eastern Bible family tree. It would have ended at the Geneva Bible. And we said about the Geneva, which is true, there was too much debate. There's debate today now. About the King James Bible. And the Baptist churches are set in fire. They're ready to explode the King James Bible. God's going to step in one day. And he'll deal with you at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Whatever your case may be. So this has begun 1607. We're going to stop right there. And we got the translation group. I think this is going to take maybe two nights. Two more days. And we're done. I think I said I may do one more in addition to this, but I'm not really sure. But that's it for today. And just this, listen, this, you can go Google King James 6, King James 1. You can read yourself. And, there, you know, people, King James was a sodomite. Oh, uh, oh, come on. You can do better than that, can't you? Your piano player's running off with, with your music director, okay? There's more truth in that than King James being a sodomite. Have a good day.